everyone welcome back to my channel and to another vlog today's vlog is going to be me going to see a musical for the first time since 2018 and i'm so excited the last musical i saw was the original west end cast of heathers in london and since then well, that was at the beginning of my career with disney cruise line so obviously in between that time i've had different contracts and also covid that stopped me from going to see musicals that i wanted to see so yeah this is the first time i've been able to see one it's been a long time since i saw a musical and i've missed it and the one that I'm seeing today just so happens to be Heathers again. So that's really cool sort of full circle moment of the last musical I saw being Heathers and now seeing it again. So I'm really excited to see this new cast um, on the tour and seeing what they bring to the different characters and what their take on the characters are and stuff like that. So come along with me. I'm going to see it in the matinee at the Cardiff Millennium Centre. Um, so yeah, come and have fun with me. Come and have big fun with me, should I say. <laughs> show thoughts section of this vlog i didn't get a chance to film it yesterday so i thought i would do it today the next day now when everything is still fresh in my mind after watching the show so just for context i went and saw it in the wales millennium center i saw the matinee performance of heathers at 2 30 so i will just say because it was a thursday because it was like middle of the week and they don't have a very long run in cardiff so i was expecting it to be packed but i guess because it was a thursday 
and it was the afternoon. Some parts of the theatre were so empty. Like I was sat within the first, I think, five rows of the theatre in the stalls and there was so much space around me, um, which I was surprised by because I thought the stalls would be packed and like maybe further back would be busy. I couldn't really see the balcony so I don't know, know who was on there. And I think there were more people behind me but like it was quiet. And I was so surprised by that, like the show was not sold out, which I thought it would be because like Heather has such a cult following and people love it. Um, so at first I felt so sorry for the cast because for the first half of act one, people weren't reacting to things as, as much as I thought they would. Like in the original West End production that I saw in 2018, people were going wild, like some parts of the shows have such big huge reactions to it people like cheer they get so excited there's a lot of commotion from the audience from certain parts of the show or like they're laughing at certain parts so like with all of these lines that would get delivered that are usually quite funny or like certain parts of songs that people would usually react to and get really excited about that wasn't happening so i was i felt so bad because i thought oh god this cast are going to come off after act one and like this audience is so dead like why are we here but people did pick up then like maybe towards the end of act one and then into act two people were going crazy the beginning of the show usually obviously when veronica's blue blazer gets revealed in beautiful people usually go crazy for that and they weren't really doing that as much as i would like them to um in the beautiful section where the heathers are introduced people weren't really going crazy for that dead girl walking a lot of reaction to that because it's i mean it's a great song but also what's happening in the song is like great uh but when veronica's shirt is ripped open by jd nobody really reacted to that and like for the rest of the song i don't know because i'd already experienced like hardcore like corn nuts watching this show in london i don't know if it's just touring productions in general because i know that happens a lot in six the musical like in London people react to it and like there's such a big fan base for it in the, like in the main theatres that they're usually in so when it goes on tour I don't know if people have different theatre etiquette and they don't think that they can react like that because I know um that's what happens in that show so I don't know if that was what was happening here but then as the show picked up like uh when Dead Gay Sun happened in act two and Shine the Light people were going wild for it so I think it just needed to take them some time to warm into the show. Everybody was so incredible. I have the uh, brochure here next to me um, so that I can refer to the cast because they have the little sheet with everybody's information in there so I know who is who when I mention specific people because I will give a couple of shout outs and like maybe some uh, vocal performances that kind of really blew me away in the show that I want to talk about. Um, yeah but just in general it took me a while to get used to this cast because obviously I was so used to seeing the original West End cast and listening to that soundtrack but as well as that the original off-Broadway soundtrack with Barrett Wilbert Weed so I was used to the way that they sung things or the way that they delivered lines or just what I last saw because I know there's been some changes to scenes or lines or lyrics in this uh production now so I was expecting that and when that wasn't happening it took me a second to be like oh okay that's fine like that's what's happening now but yeah I still I, I loved it though um, it was nice and refreshing to see a different way of different characters being portrayed or different way lines were going to be said and delivered or different ways that songs were being sung um because you know if you get used to it being sung the same way over and over again it gets a bit boring so it was nice to have a fresh outlook on these songs and these characters so that was really lovely I really enjoyed that they were all so incredible and they worked so hard I know they're nearing the end of their run so if they wanted to they could get a bit lazy with it and they could maybe not put as much into it but they all put so much into this and you could really see how much it meant to them like towards the end of the show I I know because it is the near the end of their run now I think they've only got next week now and they're done they were starting to get a bit emotional and like when they were doing the bows I think some of them were at least on the verge of tears um so you could really tell that this show means a lot to them and how strong and close they are as a cast so I really liked seeing that there was a few technical things that like bothered me slightly um at the beginning of the show I don't know if it's just the way that Rebecca Wick sings in general when she is singing but like she was quite quiet in some sections that I couldn't really hear her but it was especially prominent in Beautiful um just after they've done the curtain ram section and just before the Heather's introduced when she's singing the three Y's and so the first two Y's I couldn't hear <laughs> very well and plus she was stood behind other people too um and then when she sang the, th the third Y it was a lot louder so I don't know if she was having microphone issues um and then they ended up bumping it up and then there was uh, a lighting thing for me that 
um kind of bugged me so at the end spoiler alert um when there's the explosion um with jd and the, the bomb uh <laughs> so they had the effect lights going off so it looked like there was an explosion and they was flashing and then obviously it's supposed to go pitch black and then jd is supposed to be gone he's dead but i can still see simon gordon um the lighting didn't go quite as black as it should have done so you could still see his shadow stood there with the bomb like not moving and then it eventually did go like completely black so that they could do it was only a couple of seconds but i was like that's i can still see him <laughs> so that was kind of funny to me but that was the only two things that i noticed that were a little bit mm, about it let me talk about some performances now because that's probably what you're actually here for so i had a full cast which was really exciting everybody was on the a game everybody was so good let me talk about the main girl herself veronica first because it's her show essentially rebecca wicks was so good obviously like i said i was used to the versions of veronica before i don't want to try and make this video or this section of the video about comparing casts and who i preferred more than the other because i don't want to do that that's just not that's just not nice like you have to respect people's performances in their own right and not compare them to other actresses and then decide on what you think of them because of the previous versions that came before them like no one is better than the other like everybody has their own version and it's nice to see those versions for instance i know barrett will but we she played a very goofy sassy version of veronica very sarcastic and deadpan carrie hope fletcher who i did see she played it again very sassy but she added like another layer of like fierce kind of fearlessness to Veronica that really sort of played into a lot more of her motives as the show went on uh, which I really liked but then Rebecca Wicks again added that sass to it she was very goofy as well and she added a layer of innocence to the character a little bit of naivety that I quite enjoyed and it was really refreshing to see that and her voice is incredible like usually as the show could go on Veronica's voice could get a little bit less strong but her vocal performance was so strong you can really tell that she really does look after her voice very very well because veronica is not an easy track to perform like she's pretty much always in the belting area of her voice and there's a lot of big notes that she has to sing but i think she really knows her voice because she knew when not to opt up she knew when to sustain notes and she knew how to do it all in such a healthy way and i really really loved that about her like she could have gone really big and like done all of the riffs but like she chose to not do that because she knew that wouldn't have been healthy for her voice her voice was sensational her facial expressions were hilarious i love the facial expressions that all of the veronicas give when they are doing certain parts of the show i think it's so funny and i really really loved her performance the heathers were incredible loved the heathers took me a while to warm up to Heather Chandler. To be honest, I preferred Maddie Firth's version of uh, Heather Chandler when she was dead. <laughs> I just think she was so funny. Me inside of me always gets me every time because of how goofy Heather Chandler is being in that moment. So different to what we'd already known from her. So I thought she was hilarious. And I will talk about some vocal performances from her in a second. Let me think, who else did I love? Georgina Hagen. I was so excited to see her play Miss Fleming. Back in the day, in like, I think 2008, I used to watch her on a TV show called Britannia High that aired on ITV and I was in awe of her when she was on that show I think she was only like 18 at the time so she was super young but vocally she was incredible and I just I was in awe of her she was amazing um so when I heard that she was going to be in this show as Miss Fleming I knew that I was in for a treat because I already had such high expectations of her as a person as an actress as a vocalist and she did not disappoint she was so good like the reaction that she had from the audience really made my heart soar with happiness because it's what she deserves she's just she was an incredible miss fleming not just miss fleming though she was a really good veronica's mom she played those characters really well and her miss fleming was hilarious and i loved her shine a light but i'll talk about that in a second but i really i really enjoyed seeing her i was so excited to see her and i was yeah not disappointed i was blown away by her performance i also really enjoyed let me get his name kurt candley who played ram's dad slash big bud dean slash coach ripper <laughs> he was so funny each of his characters because obviously the male like adult characters usually play more than one character so all three of his characters were so different from one another but so funny especially his big bud dean like just some of the little noises that he made or like some of the character choices he made were just so 
funny. And then who else have we got? Kurt and Ram were hilarious. They are Liam Doyle and Rory Phelan. They were so good. Um, I love Kurt and Ram as characters anyway. Very underrated as characters because they are so funny and their dynamic is hilarious. I love their little like bro-ness that they have during the songs and during certain parts of the scene, especially when they're dead. They're just so funny. And actually, Liam Doyle, the last time I was in this theatre itself um, was in 2012, crazy. Um, and it was when I went and saw Wicked and he was my Fierro. So it was really cool to see him again in a different show in the same theatre. Um, so that was nice, a little full circle moment for me to have seen that. Oh, Mari, is that how you pronounce her name? Mari Angus, who played Martha Dunstock. I thought she was incredible. Just like little parts of scenes where she could just be in the background and not really doing much, but like she was doing the most. Um, especially in Beautiful, just before she introduces Martha, like when she's trying to get her attention and she's she's so goofy, I just adored it. Her kindergarten boyfriend like broke my heart. I will talk about that in a second again, but I just thought that she was so, so good and I really loved her performance. I thought she was the perfect casting for Martha Dunstock. And then JD, Simon Gordon. I said I wasn't gonna be that person that compared, but personally for me, I think that the way JD is played by Jamie Moscato, who literally blew me away when I saw him as JD. Personally, I prefer JD played in that way, where he um, has all of these layers, but like, as they slowly start peeling off this really scary, like sociopathic personality comes out. And I love that about that version of JD. And I'm not saying I didn't like Simon Gordon's performance. I thought he was so good. His voice was so pretty, like freeze your brain. I loved his version of freeze your brain. He sounded so nice in 17. I loved that as well. It was so sweet. And I feel like he does have a lot more sincerity and like slightly sweet innocent version of JD compared to the sociopathic homicidal maniac that um Jamie Moscato brought us so maybe that was why it's because I was so used to certain lines being said the certain way by that version of JD but I don't know I did I still I'm not saying I didn't enjoy his performance because I really did I think he was a really good JD and I did swoon a little bit at the end of fight for me when he was like uh doing his slow-mo like hair pushback I thought that was I was like, okay, I see why you're cast now. I see it. And the height difference between him and Rebecca Wicks just got me every time because it was just so adorable. But yeah, he was a really good JD. Just for me, I prefer it played in a more creepy, like scary, sociopathic way because then you can really like see that progression more throughout the show and um, like it shocks you more. Um, but that was that's just my personal preference. Like I'm not saying he wasn't good. I'm not saying that at all. He was really good. Um, but just that's personally what I prefer out of my JD. Let's talk about some vocal performances. Like I said, Rebecca Wicks was insane. Um, and Simon Gordon's voice was beautiful as well. I loved his version of Freeze Your Brain. Maddie Firth, her riff at the end of Candy Store. I knew it was good because I'd heard clips of it um, on the internet, um, on I think Instagram, people that I follow, um, a couple of like Broadway slash musical theatre slash West End accounts, they sometimes post like little snippets of people singing certain parts of songs and they posted her version of Candy Still Riff and I knew it was good but when I saw it in person I, I was like oh my god I had to like take a second. So good. I liked that version of that riff a lot. I loved uh, in Dead Gay Son, I said I was going to talk about um, Kurt again, who played Ram's dad in that song. His riff at the end of Dead Gay Son, my goodness, it was just, it kept going and going and I was like, this guy's voice, I was not expecting it. Because um, there's a couple of songs on the soundtrack, I'm not going to lie, that I don't really pay attention to or I tend to skip. That is one of them, as well as Shine a Light and Kindergarten Boyfriend. And let me tell you, those are the three songs that blew me away the most in the, in the show. I just thought they were so good. Well, I, all of the songs, all of the songs blew me away. And I was so excited to see them again. So all of the songs I was so excited about hearing. But there's certain songs that I wasn't expecting to be loving so much. And that was one of them. Shine a Light, I, I like Shine a Light anyway, it is a good song. But like I said, I tend to listen to other people's songs more and don't really pay attention to that song as much 
but like I said Georgina Hagen's voice is just her climax to shine a light was just so good I adored her version of shine a light and I just love her anyway I, I she's always been such a good vocalist so seeing her live was just very exciting for me and then uh Lizzie Parker who played uh, Heather McNamara. She already had me pretty emotional anyway with her little speech that she says before Lifeboat um, and I was a bit teary-eyed for that and then when she sang Lifeboat and then it gets to the sort of big like section in the middle where it's like everyone's pushing everyone's fighting that oh my god I had so many goosebumps I was oh she was incredible I loved that so much and then like I said Mari who played Martha Dunstock her kindergarten boyfriend broke my heart to the point where I almost cried and I never usually get that emotional during that song even though it is a very sad song especially because of what happens after that song so I was just and then 17 reprise was just oh I just thought it was so sweet and everybody looked like so emotional um and you could really see how close a group of people that was and I just I just love that show so much. Also shout out to the ensemble just because they make the show just as much as the principal cast do and they do so much during that show. They do all of the harmonies and the vocals in the background that you wouldn't really pay attention to and they do all the set changes and they're just so good and because I'd already seen this show before I felt like I could really watch them during certain parts of the show rather than just solely focusing on like the main characters and I there were certain things that I just really I picked up on that I really loved from them especially during like the slow-mo scenes in like Beautiful and Fight For Me I just oh I just adored the ensemble I think they are such an integral part of Heathers and they were all so good too so shout out to them and the whole cast really they were all so amazing and I loved I love this show I love this show so much with all of my heart and it just made me very happy like I said seeing it again because I didn't think I would get to see it again. I would say if you get the chance to see them go see them but they're finishing next week so that's probably not gonna happen but yeah I appreciate this cast they did so amazingly well um, and there's always so much pressure when a new cast of Heathers gets announced because of the big like fan appreciation for this show so they carried those roles so well and they were all incredible so it was beautiful it was big fun and that is all I have to say really about the show and I guess that's the end of the video <laughs> so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this little musical theatre vlog if you want to see more things like this I would love to hear from you on that because I love musicals I have a lot coming up um, in the next year that I'm going to see next month I'm seeing Beauty and the Beast so I'm so excited about that so if you want to see something about that as well let me know so yeah for now I guess all I have to say is don't forget to subscribe to my channel <laughs> it would mean a lot if you would give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time in another video good bye